frame shop. Uh, this is where I make my frames and I cut things. I have tools, I have drill presses, and I have moldings for my frames, all within reach. Lots of uh, spaces in this room to make frames. So anyway, I'm going to be painting on a board this time. Last time we did it on silk. This time we're going to do it on masonite. Now this particular masonite has been planed down so that it is actually thinner than the stuff you can get at the store. I've already marked where I'm going to cut. Uh, I'm going to cut two and an eighth inches wide and three inches long. I'm going to cut the long way first. Like this. This way so that I'm only using a little bit. Ready? Turn on the saw. Not, it's not touching the blade yet. Now I'm going to move it into the blade slowly and carefully and trying to keep it square. Now I'm not a professional woodworker so if I'm doing this wrong that's a, you know, I'm just showing you how I do it. make sure that my um, canvas or wood is square and my I have this this tool here that tells me whether or not it is that corner is that corner is not real square but it is pretty close usually if I get the frame square no one will notice this isn't square it'll fit into the frame so I've chosen the molding that I want for this picture. It is some kind of ebony, but it's not a real black ebony. It has some nice uh, modeling in it, which kind of look African to me. And I've added two moldings. I've, I've taken a small molding and I have glued it to the larger molding. And I will paint that an off-white to make it resemble a liner of a size frame and I have glued it and these clips were there to hold it in place and hopefully that's all dry and we're ready to go um, my husband was not happy with the tool that came with this to to set the different angles so he built me one that was more precise because I wasn't getting a good frame every time. So there's actually two parts of this. This is for the left angle and miter and this is for the right miter and nice enough to write left and right on it for me. <laughs> so I won't put it in the wrong place. So to make a frame first thing I do is is cut the 45 degree angle on one end so for the next cut I have to switch over to my right angle and this is a stop and it will help me make the two sides the exact same so the first thing I have to do is look at my piece and measure where I want to cut it. I like to cut the long side first. So I'm looking and letting it fit in here. I can give it a little bit of room, but you want it to be pretty precise. So I've marked where I want my cut. I made it a little bit in side because that's how you do it. You want it to be a little bit smaller than this so that it will fit in that rabbit. So I'm doing a dry run so I can see exactly where the blade is going to hit that little measurement spot and I'm moving this stop right there so this will always go to the same spot so on my next cut it'll be exactly the same measurement so, the, so it'll be square. 
and I'm going to hold this tightly and I'm ready to cut. That sounded awful. <laughs> now I have the four pieces. Two that should be identical in size and two that should be identical in size. Awesome. So now we can put these together and make a frame. So I'm going to be gluing the frame together and when I first started to do this I used a, a gluing jig like this and I would, these are perfectly good 45 degree angles and I would glue the pieces together. I'd glue one corner in here like that and then I would glue another corner in the other corner and when that was dry I would put them together and glue them in here. And that worked for me for many years. Um, but recently I started using um, this tool, which is a, um, a clamp. I'm going to dry fit it in here. And once I get the right proportions, then I will glue it and then set it in place and make sure that it's square. So they have to be pretty tight and fit just right. They have to be loose enough for you to be able to take them out and glue them, but they're pretty close to where they're going to be. And then I tighten them up once I put the glue in there. So that's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to put some glue. Now, I any wood glue will do. This particular glue is the tight bond and I put it in this glue applicator and you just put a little spot on it and I put them together, rub them up nice so that all the little spots have glue. If it tends to overflow then just wipe that off. And this doesn't dry instantly so you can give it a little bit of time while you're figuring out exactly how it all fits together. Okay, so once you've got it and all the little pieces look like they're fitting together, then you start tightening these up, wiping off excess glue. So I believe this is dry and I'm going to take it out of this clamp and check out the back and the corners and such and so in order to finish this I tend sometimes there's little little spots that need to be filled and then I'll sand it down to make sure that there's no hard edges or you know I I just fix all the little burrs and things and then I will be painting this inner liner um, a light color probably not a white white but an off-white. So let's see the moment of truth. Will this fit? Yeah, it's just a teeny weeny bit off. So I am going to trim this a little bit more so it will fit and then we can start on the painting. You want to make sure that the board that you're using is gessoed and then sanded smooth. You don't want to see any brush strokes or anything. And so I always take a nice fine sandpaper and uh, go over it a few times. Some people will do several layers and sand between layers. Whatever you feel is going to give you that surface that you like. This is a, a a little bit later everything's dry now on my frame and uh, it's it, it has a few rough ed edges that needs to be 
um, finished. So I am going to fill a, a gap that I have only on one corner. I'm going to sand it down and get rid of some of the rough edges and I'm going to paint the inside liner with an off-white and that will help the painting really pop in this little frame. There's a tiny little gap in one of these corners. This happens sometimes. So I have my wood filler and a toothpick. And the reason I, I have the toothpick is sometimes it's really hard to squeeze this wood filler out. And you have to kind of pick at it and get it. But I buy the smallest container of wood filler I can because it tends to dry out really quickly. So with the toothpick I can get a, just a little bit, I don't need a whole lot, and kind of squish it in there. You can push it in with your fingers or with your toothpick or whatever little tool you have and get rid of any little gaps there might be. Now that I'm done with the filler, I am going to like get rid of some of the little rough edges. Right here there's a little bit of wood. So I'm taking my X-Acto knife and kind of getting rid of the little edges that are sticking up. I think I fussed with these corners, got the extra glue and rough edges off, and then I'm going to take some fine sandpaper and refine it even more. And I'm sure that every you know that you probably were going to ask me what grit this is. I think this says 220. Um, I'm not a sandpaper expert. I just get a nice fine tooth. You want to make sure that you do not round the corners. You want to keep them sharp, but you don't want them to, you know sharp enough to cut your fingers on. And get rid of the rough edges. Um, I have this very neat little sanding stick that I can get into the corners a little bit easier. And these tools you can find in the woodworking catalogs or stores or Micromart is a really good catalog for little tools. Get all the dust out of there. Sometimes if you take um, craft paper or this is just a paper towel, a soft paper towel. You kind of rub hard on it and it brings out the sheen of the wood. I'm going to use acrylic paint to paint this inner molding. Um, uh, I can use oils, but oils will take a while to dry and it may be two or three days before I can put the painting into the frame. With acrylics, I can put it in the frame this afternoon because it'll be dry in minutes. Now that's one of the things I don't like about acrylics is they dry so fast. So to, ex to slow down the drying process I use a, a slow dry retarder. This is a Liquitex brand but there's lots of different brands. Um, and I mix the retarder with my paint. I've already mixed the color that I want. And so I get my paintbrush wet with the retarder and fill it my brush. I use a small brush, but not the smallest one I can use. If I find I need to switch to a smaller brush, I will. I like to start with the corner inside. And you want to try to not touch the dark wood and keep it on the lighter inner portion. As you see, I do have a steady hand. If you find yourself shaking a bit. It just, you know, sometimes it's practice makes perfect. And then you smooth it out and see if there's any little lumps and dry paint or see if there's anything bugging you about this. So after it's dry, if you want, you can put a final, final coat of varnish or shellac on it and that'll give it kind of a glossy um, look to it. Um, if you don't like a glossy look, get a matte varnish.